You know who it is, everybody. I'm back once again with another video and whispering because my son is sleeping like right over here. A lot of you guys found me more recently through my No Leave Out Quick Weave video. And a question I got a lot was, can you do this with straight hair? Honestly, I didn't think you could. I'm still not sure you can, but by the end of this video, we're gonna find out. Now I am in the process of locking my hair so I had to factor that in with doing this style. Normally I probably would have just done a sew in but because I wanted to protect my lock babies and make sure I didn't cause any damage this early on because I'm only about three months in, I opted for a wig instead but of course you can do this with a quick weave, you can do it with a sew in, it's really up to you and what you want. Today I'm using hair from Love Me. They sent me four bundles actually, but I ended up using really a little less than three. And I'm using lengths 16, 18, and 20. These are their body wave bundles. And I must say that these bundles are like pretty full. I've recently been struggling to find good bundles. The last bundles I got, I think were from like Amazon and they were so thin, I ended up just sending them back. But I was very happy to see that these bundles were not that. They did not thin out towards the end. They were thick all the way through. They were the appropriate lengths. And um, honestly, three bundles is more than enough. Jumping right into this tutorial, I have two different types of weaving caps that I had to choose from. One is this closed top weaving cap, which is a little less structured. And then you have the crochet braid wig cap that um, is more structured. I end up choosing the weaving cap. I'm not gonna say I have any regrets about that, but do keep in mind that there's less structure here so you can easily rip this. So you wanna be very careful. But what I do like about it is that it has a lot of stretch, which I wanted to have because it's kind of hard to really um, account for how much space my locks are going to take up so as you can see here the first thing i'm going to do instead of putting the net on the mannequin head i'm going to put it directly on myself and the reason i'm doing this is because i want to mark off certain spots on my head to make sure when i put it on my mannequin head it matches this is very important so i'm working with what i have here so i grab my son's chalk and i'm just marking off where my ears are and then I'm marking around, I want to say my temples, but it's really like the area where you would put a closure. These are my four guidelines. And between bundles, I do take the wig off of the mannequin head and place it on mine just to make sure everything is still lined up. I have plenty of netting left and things don't end up being too small or too tight. All right, so now we are moving on to our mannequin head. And as you can see, I have my two front markings and then on each side i have the marking where the ear will be so i try to line that up about where it would be on my head all right so now i'm going to start stitching here i am sewing the 20 inch bundle and i'm starting at the nape of the neck so right from where the top of the ear would be and then I'm coming down across the nape of the neck and then meeting the other ear. I am using the fold over method. Um, there may have been a couple of times where I cut the track just because I wanted to place like the last portion of it right in the middle or something. But for the most part, I did the fold over. And of course, once I got to the front, I'm not gonna say of course, but I did cut more towards the front because I didn't want it to be as bulky. And you'll see as I got further up, I put a, this is actually like a reusable bag or something from a beauty supply store. I just rolled it up and put it in the back to kind of mimic my locks so I can make sure I have a good amount of space back there for my hair. And you want to try to make sure that this is going to be like kind of under, you know how you have a little nugget in the back of your head? Yeah, kind of put it under that if that makes sense. 
And don't act like I'm the only one with the nugget on the back of their head. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The little hook, the little, that little spot. You want to make sure it's under that. So when the hair falls, you can't see a big lump from your hair. So yeah, I'm just doing the nape of the neck. And then I'm going to start coming up more um, around to the temples. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. Make sure that the band at the front of the wig is kind of slid back about the same, to the same position it would be on your head. Because keep in mind, you want this to be slightly behind your hairline so that you have space for the crochet method. And here we are after the first bundle. And I'm trying to keep the head kind of tilted back because if I do slide the band back, it might slide off the mannequin altogether. So it was easier for me to just put it here and just keep in mind that this is how the wig will naturally fall. Next, moving on to the 18 inch bundle. And once we get to this area, I'm kind of spacing them out a little more because I don't want to add too much hair. I don't want it to be um, too hot for one. And I want to like have some space for the net to stretch. Once I got the tracks to where those top chalk marks are, I started doing the track straight back, so just straight across the back instead of bringing it all the way around. And I just went back and forth a few times that way just to kind of bring it in closer to the front. And then I did another U shape. So here's where we are, and this is where we're gonna start doing our flip over method. You guys have seen me do this a few times, but this will be the first time I tried it with straight hair and no leave out. All right, so first you wanna decide where you want your hair to flip over to. I want it to flip this way, so I'm gonna lay the tracks in the opposite direction. And you'll see how I'm kind of angling the tracks forward. Like I'm kind of curving them a bit towards the hairline in order to hide the track more. So you'll see that the hair is kind of draping down towards the hairline. And I'm just gonna do this all the way across. And once we get to a pretty small section, I'm gonna start doing them across the back like this. And from there, I'll just fill in wherever I see fit. So you'll see me going from front to back. And this final track I'll do in the opposite direction, right up against that track on the other side. Next, I'm gonna grab this small crochet hook. You'll notice it's a bit smaller than your typical crochet hook that you'll find at your beauty supply store. So I'll leave a link in the description box so you guys can get yours. What I like about this size is that you can get a smaller amount of hair through a smaller space. And you'll see I'm sticking it right between those tracks. And what I'm gonna do is just pull hair from under that track over the track. And I'll do this on both sides just to mask those tracks in the middle. And once that's done, I just play with it a little to see how it'll look once I flip it over. And now to put it on my head, I am twisting back my locks into a nice tight bun. Putting on a wig cap, um, a black wig cap would be preferable, but this is what I had, so this is what I'm using. Here's how the wig looks on the inside. And it's so easy to slip on. You can use hairpins to secure it if you find that necessary. And you'll see I'm sliding the wig just behind my hairline. Now, the first way I did this did not work. I did my usual crochet method for the no leave out look and it just, the hair was just springing forward too much. It looked a little crazy. 
I added some gel and brushed that in to try to mask it. It did make it look a little better. I tied it up, but ultimately this method did not work. So I had to try something else. So here I am with my second attempt. This time I separated piece by piece. So I worked in sections across my hairline. So I separated a little hair at the front. I added a little foam. Even a holding spray would be good just to give you some grip and make this a little easier. And then I took a comb and I just teased the hell out of it. I just teased it, teased it, teased it. And what I'm just trying to do is build up kind of enough volume to cover the tracks, the band on the wig, and all that good stuff to just make it nice and seamless. And from there I take my scissors and I just hack away. Notice I'm not doing it super short. I'm not making baby hairs or anything. I'm just kind of cutting it so it just looks more natural. When you think about people with like long hair, your hair is rarely the same length all the way through. You may have shorter hair in the front, along the edges. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to use that idea of making it look natural to also mask the fact that this is a wig and I have no leave out. So as you can see, it still has a pretty good length on it. I'm spreading it out some more. And now I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna go under my natural hair around my hairline and just pull a few small pieces under my hair. And you'll see I'm pulling it in the opposite direction of where I want my flip over to go, just like that. The goal here is not so much to use these hairs to hide anything, but more so to pull that hair forward so it's not flapping up in the wind and exposing tracks, wig band, all that good stuff. So you don't need to do a bunch of strands, just enough to pull each section of that um, teased up hair down towards your hairline. It just kind of works as an anchor. And once that's done, you can tease some more. Honestly, if I hadn't added that gel when I did, this probably look even better. But if you look at it once I'm done, this isn't bad. Like this, this is pretty good for straight hair. I've impressed myself. I got a little nervous there for a moment, but I think I pulled this off. What do you guys think? With that being said, here is the final look. I am very happy with it. Like honestly, I was feeling myself after I did this because like I said, I did not think you could do this with straight hair, but it turns out it's possible. You might not get the super silky straight look, but if you're a girl like me who doesn't mind a more, you know, naturally slightly messy look, then this works. When your hair is like super slick and people know, oh yeah, that's a weave. You want people to be guessing. You want them to be like, is that her real hair? I don't know, because the edges look a little, got a little frizz to them. So it looks like it's her hair, but I don't, I don't know. That's what you want people to say when they see your hair. And that's what I get from this. And that's all I have for you guys today. If you found this helpful, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, hit me up in the comment box below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss my next video. Until then, peace.